Ladies and gentlemen, I believe I have gathered enough information to properly conclude that alt season has started. Altcoins are taken over, it's happening, the showdown has come around, and the gains, oh, 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 they're going to be crazy, and it's about to get a whole lot crazier, as you guys all know. So today, I want to talk a little bit about that, and of course, we're giving away 250 XRP if this video can get to 1500 likes in 24 hours, and all you have to do is make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed, and make sure you comment something down below, and let's get started, because this metric has finally shifted towards the positive side. I already told you guys, I believe it is happening. I believe all coins will be taken over. And now it has finally happened over the last 90 days. 75% at least of the top 50 coins have performed better than Bitcoin has, which means if you held all coins, it would have been more profitable than holding Bitcoin. And that will most likely continue on for a little while. Is it a necessity? Definitely not. Can things turn around? Definitely, for sure, 100%. Is it looking more keen? that this will just continue on though yes yes and again yes because if you really take a good look at it most of our big altcoins really haven't risen that much like we saw back in 2017-18 a lot of the coins are still just following bitcoin with a little bit of a higher margin yes or mostly the coins that were lower in market cap have evolved towards the top have done well from a position which they were at but if we're talking about the real main coins ada bnb yeah maybe those or vchain were were some that really performed quite well but still some coins like ethereum xrp and, and a couple of these other ones the the older ones here have yet to go crazy even though i firmly still believe that they will do that eventually waiting for a newer alt season to uh, come around though right little side note though xrp actually did perform better than bitcoin over the last three months so over the last quote-unquote season which i think is kind of interesting and some people like to underestimate xrp's price gains because well, the gains were actually quite solid still, if you think about it. In the last 90 days, you would have gotten 125.6% return on that. That's actually pretty damn big. But some people like to, of course, just disregard all of that. They're like, well, XP is a shit coin. XP is this, that, this, that. But it did perform quite nicely. So, yeah, I think a lot of people would like to just give it less credit than uh, where it's due. Because this coin is, is really not that bad. Having said that, though, what's about to happen? What's going on? Well, I've seen a lot of different theories. But one thing you should know is that holding is not as easy as some of these people make it out to be. Even I. right? I'm always showing a, a simple picture and a good picture. But that's because I firmly believe in my coins. And if you don't have that same feeling, all I can do is just explain to you or tell you what coins I have and give you some spreadsheets and whatnot over on Patreon. But I cannot make you believe in your coins. That's not something I can do. You always got to fight for yourself what looks juicy, what you think is good to hold for the next couple of years. And you can differentiate between a short-term and a long-term portfolio. Okay, you might sell some coins to buy some different ones. All good. But know what you're holding. Know what you have. In my opinion, for example, XRP is a solid hold. I don't really even think about selling that. Why? Because I know what I hold. And that is why the road really looks a little bit like this for me. It's just start to end but then, of course, crawling pace, not biking pace. What the, <laughs> this guy, you think it's cycling pace? No, no, no. It's freaking crawling pace for a very freaking long lap. But it's not like this, though. The reason they're making this picture out is because there are very hard times throughout the holding experience where you're thinking of, oh, should I sell? My wife is bugging. Oh, I'm down 78% of my money. What do I do? We've all had those times. I bought a ton. I've lost bitcoins, multiple. Uh, for very stupid mistakes. It happens. It definitely is going to happen. I bought a lot of altcoins which have now faded into the freaking obscurity. It has happened before in the past. Does it happen right now too often? No, not really. I don't really buy losers anymore that often. But I've had it sometimes where Bitcoin outperforms my altcoin. And I feel bad. Why though? Why? Because I also hold Bitcoin. I don't know. It's just because the market kind of does you in some way where you're always hoping for the best return out of the whole market. But I sometimes seem to forget that whatever happens, I have a lot of these coins. So if crypto continues, I will continue to make money. And since I'm staking a lot of these coins too, I will always make money in crypto. But still, sometimes it just hurts in your head that you don't have the best gain or you're insecure about your portfolio. As long as you believe in your coins, if you're down 50, 70, 80, 95% on your money for a little while, guys, it is not the end of the world unless you have lost your faith in the coin or the coin has decided to exit scam or, you know, something really detrimental happened. For example, the coin lost a lawsuit. You know, like some people are speculating with XRP. That type of stuff can really take it all the way off the market. However, with XRP, in my opinion, this coin is still going to recover eventually and still really break through uh, on a lot of different levels. Having said that, 
Jeff ISO XRP just came out with this tweet saying, wow, come on, Canada, let's get this going. And then there's a little video from a girl from South Africa, apparently. The Bank of Canada is considering using Ripple's technology for payment from Ripple Swell NA 2020. I watched this. It was really interesting. However, I don't really understand why this tweet from July 29th is now coming up unless some newer information came out, which I did not know about or have not seen. However, you know, I, I don't really know why. So if you guys know, all you have to do is just let me know in the comments down below and I will hear about it. I will, you know, would like to know about it. But yeah, maybe something new has happened. I'm not quite sure on that department, right? So that's just a complete honest opinion here. I don't know. <laughs> and I like to be honest on that front because, well, there's of course some things that I do not know about either. Yet, yeah, I guess this is just being confirmed now. That's uh, maybe all that he wanted to explain. Then SEC v. Ripple, U.S. judge orders both parties from the XP lawsuit to hold a discovery conference. That is interesting. In a fresh twist to the Securities and Exchange Commission's fight against Ripple, U.S. Judge Sarah Netburn has directed both parties to hold a telephonic discovery conference on Tuesday, April 6th. The judge's order directs the parties to discuss a motion to compel filed by Ripple's lawyers. So what this is actually referring to, what this is talking about, is the whole ordeal about Bitcoin and Ethereum and those documents. That's what they're going to be discussing that day. And I've already explained to you why that is a big date. However, some things have changed in the last, like, 30 hours or so because some new documents came out and the reason that is so important to discuss once more is because right now we have two really important things to wait for and that is one for a partial settlement from ripple like we've explained in the video before like two videos ago or one video ago and the second one is april 6th the verdict on bitcoin and ethereum and whether or not those pub uh, those documents will be made public or at least be given to ripple in this lawsuit that is going to be crucial, but both of these things could have a really heavy impact on the XRP price, and we should be aware of them, should be watching closely, because that is something that is tradable. If you buy in right now, for example, I'm not saying you should, as this is not financial advice. If you were to buy in right now, though, and one of these two things comes out with a positive verdict, instant money. Almost a guarantee that you have instant profit. Not a guarantee, but almost. However, if one of these two verdicts is negative, once more, you understand it already, Almost negative loss. <laughs> almost certainly a negative uh, profit almost instantly. So you got to understand that. Yet, what we're thinking is that Ripple has a very good chance to win both of these. Or with the one, basically the one we're talking about right now, April 6th, that they will win it. There's a good chance of that. And the second one, which is basically the a partial settlement, it's profitable for both sides. So there's a good chance that they'll come to that agreement. So that is what we're excited for right now. That's what we're waiting for. And that's also, if you're talking about the XP price, the most interesting thing to watch as well all coin season is not about just one coin yet i do think if xrp actually comes out with something really positive in this loss and they beat it eventually which already could happen with the partial settlement that would already be extremely good for xrp that xrp however funny it may sound could be one of the coins to actually propel and take over to ignite the altcoin run to really make it perform a lot better. Why? Well, we've seen before that XRP is one of the last coins to gain, and that might be the case now too, but it could also be one of the leading coins to go. It could be one of the leading coins which is going to just flow like crazy, just come rise from the ashes as it still has 600% to go. I'm wondering sometimes, when is Bitcoin Cash going to flow in? When is a TRX going to flow in? When is an EOS and some of these other coins which have done well for years now, who are still down so much money? When are those coins going to flow? A Bitcoin SV2? When? 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 Or have people just lost their faith in those coins? Have people gotten no um, more stamina to hold them and that's why they've fallen off? I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that there aren't a ton of freaking Bitcoin cash holders still waiting for it to go, yet it's still down. Like, why? What's happening? I believe firmly that those coins will go once there is a huge altcoin run. And I'm not saying you should buy them because they're not the best coins in some way, shape, or form. A coin like Dash, for example, I have some, but it's not because I'm really bullish on that, all right? It's just because I've never decided to sell. And the same thing goes for a Lite coin, same thing goes for a couple of these other coins, which used to be in the top of the top. They're just really not that solid anymore because they have no real fundamentals to some degree. They, they have no fundamentals that we need in the current situation, in the current crypto space. A NEM, for example, XEM used to be so ridiculously high, like 7th or something like that. It used to be ridiculously high, yet nobody's ever talking about that coin anymore. Nobody's ever discussing it. Same thing for EOS. It used to be so ridiculously high. Even IOTA. But why not? Why not? XMR. Same, same situation. Because they get redundant a little bit. Other people, uh, other coins come in and take over. Same thing for NEO. Yet with XRP... I still firmly believe it should be at the top, should be at the top of the top, and I think with this lawsuit, it could propel it, and most likely also take some altcoins with it, as people all of a sudden become more 
um, enthusiastic about altcoins, more enthusiastic about holding. And think about it. If XRP wins this lawsuit, slash Ripple, there's another kind of go-ahead for some of these companies to enter into the space. Because, well, another crypto has now properly been regulated and there's less of a risk for some other altcoins. So that might once more be bullish on top of bullish on top of bullish. And then asset management firm Fidelity seeks SEC approval to launch a Bitcoin ETF. I keep telling people, we are at the start of the start. Holy smokes, you get 45 euros discount? That's a nice ad. <laughs> I'm just seeing it now. There's 45 euros discount on freaking mules? That's pretty nice. I, I didn't know I need that. I needed that, but I <laughs> might even press the ad. They got me, guys. Freaking, I don't know, Facebook or whatever. It was, I don't know, putting these ads on here. They got me. That's a nice freaking advertisement. It looks, it looks pretty juicy. What do you think about the food? Let me know in the comments down below. What's your favorite food? Put it down below. Put it down below what your favorite food is. I'd like to know. It must be, oh, that's pretty crazy because you guys are all over the world. That's pretty funny to see in the comment section. Uh, this article was just addressing once more that crypto is just growing. Once the ETF comes in, a lot of institutional investment will most likely come up as well. Will the Bitcoin premium from Grayskull disappear? Well, it has already disappeared because I believe partially that people are already waiting for an ETF to come on in, which I think is going to be happening. So yeah, guys, once more, crypto is only getting started. The regulation threads, people are putting them up here, left, right, which I think is all fear, uncertainty, and doubt creation by some bigger parties because, hey, maybe they want to get in cheap or something like that because think about it. ETFs, they've been talking about it for years right now. They don't want to make them because the price is only going to keep going down. No, they know as well. There's a lot of money in this. There's a lot of longevity in this. They know it, all right? They know it. They want it. They'll get it eventually. It's just a matter of time. But I am excited, guys. I am very freaking excited because I know it is coming up. And I know that we can make a lot of money on this one. All I have to do is just wait patiently for all the gains to come on in. It's literally a waiting process. <laughs> it is that funny. It is that freaking funny. But yeah, that was it for today. I also had some comments here left open. For example, Edgar said here, I am not a US citizen, so I can buy XRP. However, I will never return to Coinbase for many reasons. First, they are first to shut down when markets go up. Second, the fees are too high. Third, they were last to announce participation in Spark Airdrop. Fourth, suspending and not realisting XRP. Of course, may several hundred thousands moving to BitTrue is nothing to Coinbase or Binance, but I am just another person never moving back to Coinbase. Fair point. Fifth, Bitru has long ago already distributed my 50% FLR IOU for now. This is actually not a good uh, reason because any exchange could do that, but it's just a, uh, there's a couple of reasons why you would not want to do that or why you shouldn't. Sixth, Bitru has first announced to participate in DAO FLR airdrop. I have all my friends in crypto remove everything from Coinbase to Bitru. By the way, a Bitru link is down below, but there is multiple benefits to both of these parties. So I hope in some years, Bitru will overtake Coinbase for its ignorance, manipulation, and total disrespect for its clients. So please don't tell XRP Mommy does not count because there are way many more people abandoning sinking ship. This is referring to a part in the video where I said that you or I moving away from Coinbase and never using it again, that's definitely not going to do too much for them. They really most likely do not care. However, the reason that it is relevant, this specific thing right here, is mostly because I do believe that Coinbase left... Uh, a drop here they do and most likely will get a drop in users because of all they're doing for example the bad actions the high fees and whatnot even though they've got a huge market cap and that will also like, also most likely kind of um be a good reason as to why they can take this amount of money yeah logically however think about it from this perspective right the reason people use coinbase so much is because they are reliable and with crypto exchanges you have that one little issue where a bit true for example there's a lot of features on BitTrue which i love that is why i'm using bit true quite a lot and why there's always a link down below I used to always have a link to Coinbase too, but the reason I decided to take that off is because they have a lot of rules which are annoying. They have a lot of uh, restrictions. They're not really fast to adapt to new things. They're always hesitant yet. There's a good part to both. And with Coinbase, the good part is that it's they're really reliable from a support perspective. You might say, oh, Dusty, but it takes so long. Might so, maybe so. But there's a very slim chance that Coinbase is going to use your money to run away or that Coinbase is going to really go bankrupt or something like that. With the bit true, you know the founder, yes, but they still might pull some crazy move on us. They might. They still might make it so their, their, their services are not available for the next week or two. They still might have, Coinbase goes out sometimes, yes. But you just know it because there's millions and millions and millions of people on there. With BitTrue, the site is always a little bit broken. A lot of things don't really work too properly. And the support is really bad. So, you know, I'm not saying that Coinbase is good. Because once more, there's a lot of bad sides to it. Which he summed up really nicely. But there's also not really... Yeah, a reason to hate on it uh, to the end because they have a couple of good parts. The only thing is they're really against XRP. So from that perspective, I'm not using it at all. But 
If people are using it, it's an easy gateway, and I understand why you would. So don't think you're really bad for using it. No, man. If that's what suits your boat or floats your boat, whatever, go for it. It's in your right to do so. I'm just saying it's not the perfect one for me. But once more, you got to all have your own personal preferences, right? Because, I mean, a lot of the guys in the comment section, they like another exchange over the one I'm using. So what? Right? Everybody has their own personal preference and uh, what things you need from an exchange. For example, I always like the staking or the lending. So, for example, BitTrue and Binance are my main exchanges. But, yeah, maybe you have another different thing you like. For example, PrimeXBT, of which a link is always down below, too. That's the one I use for the leverage trading because, hey, they have some features that I like. A uh, little side note, by the way, go check out GSX, world's first growth coin and a gold-backed crypto. Personally, I have a couple thousand dollars in this, and right now it's 10 cents a coin, plus a 5% bonus, plus a 5% bonus fuse on my link. I'm hoping that we can really make some big money on this one. Um, once more, I'm not giving a guarantee. I'm not certain, but I'm hoping to 25x my money. That's what I'm kind of here for, because this is a pretty cool concept, and you can actually see the mines and whatnot. To me, it sounds really interesting. Some people say, oh, it doesn't. It does. I think it sounds interesting, and that is that. I'm not sure if it's going to do well, though, but we can try. <laughs> And once more, if you want my portfolio, go check out uh, Patreon. I posted a couple of spreadsheets over on here. I'm still putting up a good kind of, not a spreadsheet, but a good overview of my portfolio so I can edit it easily. Because, yeah, I'm not knowing the best way to put it in here. Like, if I just put my portfolio once, it's going to be outdated really quickly. So maybe I should just share a Google Sheet where you can just check in every so often and know. But, yeah, let me know what you think about that down below. See you guys again in another crypto video. And uh, take care, everybody.